Hello, I'm Sequoia Evolution. On this episode of Ox My Boat, we're traveling with auxiliarists who call Coast Guard City USA their home and finding out that teamwork is what made their boat ox ready. If you're thinking this boat platform looks familiar, then you're right. The guys tell us the history of this particular boat. This boat it was built in 1966 by the Coast Guard in Curtis Bay, Maryland. She spent her entire career roughly, well, when she was commissioned up till about 1994, when the Coast Guard decommissioned her. And that's when the new 47 footer started coming online. The boat was donated to the Silver Sides Museum in Muskegon, and the boat deteriorated, and they didn't have the funds really to maintain it where it should have been. So they turned it back over to a government surplus. The boat ended up being mothballed, and then she deteriorated quite a bit. When we come across a boat, a private individual owns this boat. His name is uh, Randy Rochefer. He lives down in Port Sheldon. And he asks if we come together and help him rebuild the boat in turn for the labor and uh, that we put into the boat, then we could use the boat in the auxiliary. So it was a win-win for him. It was a, a great plus for us in the auxiliary because we actually get a, a, a platform that was built for doing what we're doing. Instead of taking a civilian boat and converting it to it, this boat was built for, you know, for she was what we're doing. Intensive rebuild, the boat was completely gutted. One bad engine and we had to re repower the boat. Um, the guys on board here all participated in redoing, you know, sandblasting and painting and hours of rewiring and it was just a massive project. Massive indeed. With Ken driving the project, the rest of the team tells us just how labor intensive it really was. A lot of hard work, um, a lot of real hot, muggy days, but it was quite an experience for me being able to, to work on an old boat and then being a Coast Guard boat besides that. It's been about three and a half years restoring it, stripped it down to bare metal and start from the bottom up. I was kind of a helper monkey. I just did a little bit of everything. <laughs> I did do the electronics on board and anything else Ken told me to. If it wasn't a team effort, the boat never would have got back in water because there's so many hours of, you know, hours upon hours. And a lot of it was weekend duties. A lot of guys donated their time on the you know, vacation time was, you know, used on this boat. So what work was done to take this boat from being on its last leg to being the SAR ready beauty she is today? The boys fill us in. We had the boat completely sandblasted to get down, you know, to properly prime it and paint it up again in the original colors. And uh, the Coast Guard actually reissued the same numbers, 44359, back to the boat again. So that's her official number again. So it was kind of, we were kind of tickled to have that. The electronics was uh, actually, we got from another um, auxiliary member, donated the electronics to us, and then we, Brian, rewired the boat. The boat operates on a 24 volt system. A lot of this stuff is 12 volt. So, Thanks to Brian, he went back and rewired a lot of stuff, and so it was a lot of a lot of people that came together with uh, different talents to get this project off the ground. Otherwise, it would still be sitting in the yard up Muskegon. But it's a lot of work. Um, Master Chief Anton, um, he was an engineer on the boat. He's still active reserve. He came in and helped us out with, with repowering the engine and putting the new engine back in and getting all the systems back operating again. And one of the bigger projects was to take all the rub rails off. I try to protect the rub rails because I don't want to replace them again. The rub rails are kind of a D-channel rubber, they're, so they're hollow on the inside, and then there's a stainless steel plate in there, and there's, I think we counted 109 bolts holding it on, so first we had to get those uh, metal rails out of the old rub rail, then pound them flat, force them into the new rub rail, get them, and then bending it to the shape of the hull again. It's, we spent many weekends, we had what we called rub rail parties, and got as many people as we could and just start hitting it with hammers until it worked. The involvement in putting these rub rails that protect the side of the ship when you're when you're docking uh, was a, a three weekend affair with about four or five guys working constantly and, and it's, it was quite an experience you might think by looking at her that the extreme makeover job is done but brian fills us in on a little inside tip some of it's just still doing some of the original work. Um, originally, we got all the paint and everything on the exterior done. It makes it look good for while we're underway. There's, now there's a lot of the interior stuff people don't usually see. We got to get going. Um, we got preventive maintenance on the engines, oil changes, things like that. The interior work and ongoing maintenance aside, we find out what this boat really means to this crew. 35 members in our flotilla. We're uh, very, very active. We do in excess of probably 
150 vessel exams a year in the area. This, this boat has helped us out a lot because it's a great asset and it's, it's set up for search and rescue, it's set up for towing and it's just a great platform for us because I was stationed on this boat when I was active duty so I know the boat inside now so it's been kind of a love affair for me like going back in time a little bit. So. A love affair for sure. Just taking a look at the photos of what she looked like before the team got their hands on her and you know for sure these folks oxed their boat. Now it's time for you to tell us if you've done what it takes to ox your boat. You want to see and hear what you've done to make your boat ox ready. Email us now at info at coastguardchannel.com so that we can feature your boat in a future episode of Ox My Boat.